Hi everybody and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler and today we are taking a break from the life sciences content and we're going to focus on a big topic, a stressful topic university and applying for university. This whole series that I'm going to do for you is going to look at how do you apply to university, why is your grade 11 results important, bursaries, how much does university actually cost, what to really expect when you actually get to university, what is and isn't covered in those bursaries that they give you. I'm going to walk you through all of us with today's video focusing on a big one your grade 11 results and why they actually matter and why you should be putting in as much effort as possible into your grade 11 final result. So grade 11 results, why are they a big deal? Are they a big deal? Yes, they are a big deal. They are a big deal if you are planning on going to university. These are the results that you will use to apply to university. Now, if you are watching this and it's the middle of the year, don't worry if your grade 11 results aren't looking so hot. You still have till the very end of the year of grade 11 to improve them and, and don't worry about that. And even if you're in grade 12 watching this video thinking, ah, my June exams weren't so hot either, don't panic. There's still more time for you to reapply next year, improve your marks, or even you still might get into university with your final marks. And that's something important to keep in mind. Your final marks in grade 12 are the most important mark out of all of your schooling. Now, when it comes down to applying to university, you are going to have to take your current scores and calculate them into APS or your admission point score. Now, every university has a different system and it's very frustrating. You're going to have to go to each university's website and figure out how they actually calculate it. Some give extra points here, some don't, some count some subjects, some don't. So you're really going to have to look through their prospectus brochures and figure out what you have. But we'll do a quick little demo together now so you can see roughly where are you right now with your current grade 11 marks and will you get into the degree of your choice. Now, the example university that I'm using here, and I've taken it from the WITS Prospectus for 2023, this is their APS table. And we're going to take this table and we're going to calculate how many APS points I actually have and then what can I do with them? What's the point of them? So alongside here, I've got a demonstration report card. Let's say these are my marks right now in term two of grade 11. And you will notice that I have allocated each of them a point score based off of the table that Vitz has given. You'll notice some interesting things here, though. Subjects like maths and English are really important to a lot of universities. And if you do well in them, they give you extra like bonus points. So, for example, at Vitz, if you are getting a 78% in English, that means you're going to be awarded a 6 because it works on the NSC code, so it's six points, but they gift you an extra two points because English is English, it's an important subject, it's important language when it comes to studying further, and so they give you an extra two points on that. Same for my maths score, they've also given me an extra two points as well. Something to take note of is my LO score. Now, WITS does take LO into consideration when calculating your APS points. Here, they've allotted me four points because I've gotten the highest possible category in LO in terms of their table. But other universities, sometimes they don't give you any points for LO. So I wouldn't rely on LO giving you anything when it comes to your applications to university. Don't rely on it to give you a good chunk of marks because some universities don't even calculate it into their equation. Now, along with APS scores, some other universities have disadvantaged point systems. And basically what these are, are systems of points that look at transformation within South African universities. They're really important because not everybody has the same access to resources, to levels of quality education, um, and also finances. And so some universities, for example, like UCT, uh, the University of Cape Town, they calculate your uh, disadvantaged score based off of these things, things like your financial income, so your socioeconomic status at home, um, your uh, race, as well as looking at your access to certain uh, resources sources, tutors and things like that. It all comes into play and it improves your application. 
Now, again, some universities have it, some don't. So you're going to have to go and look in the prospectus to see what you need. At BITS, they don't have that. And so I'm not going to include it in my application and looking into the different degrees now as an example. Now, I've taken my demo answer sitting with 45 points, if I do say so myself. That's, that's pretty good, guys. 45 points, APS points. But BITS, that's pretty good. Pretty much you can get into any, any, pretty much any degree with 45 points, which is really impressive. And if you think about it, if you go back to the, the total of what I got here, I wasn't getting distinctions in every single subject. So just keep that in mind the next time you think distinctions are everything and they're the only way and you're never going to be able to get distinctions in everything, you can still do really, really well and get into a good university and you don't have to be a straight A perfect student. So keep that in mind. Now, taking my APS points, let's look at some examples. Let's say, for example, I wanted to go into engineering. This is the Faculty of Engineering, and these are their APS scores. You'll also notice that other columns have like the minimum amounts for different subjects. In other words, if you want to go into engineering, you may have 43 points. Great. But you also need to be taking maths and you need to be taking physical science. Okay. Now, that means that if you have 43 points, but you don't take those subjects, unfortunately, that's not going to be an option for you. So you've always got to cross reference and make sure that you have enough points as well as the compulsory subjects that go with it. Now, I'm also going to show you the Faculty of Humanities as well. And you'll see there's a big fluctuation between the points needed between engineering and in humanities. And the fluctuation is not because it's easier to get into, but it actually has something to do with how much space they have for you and whether or not they have enough um, seats to actually give you in different degrees. And so, yes, some degrees are more competitive to get into than others. And so you need to take that into consideration that if you are going into a degree that has a lower APS score, it doesn't also guarantee that you're going to get in just because the score is lower. It actually means more people can get into that, which means you're competing with more people. And you'll notice a lot of these points have a little plus next to them. That means that's the minimum amount of points you need, which you should take into consideration because if there are too many people applying to that particular degree, you might be put on a waiting list. So try and get as many points as possible when applying. Now, the last one we're going to look at here quickly is the Faculty of Human Health Sciences or Medicine. And I get asked about medicine a lot because people want to know how to get in. It's actually quite difficult to get in. Um, there's only so many spaces in South Africa. And so it's very, very competitive. You'll notice there's no APS score here at WITS. You'll notice that there is minimum subject uh, totals but there doesn't seem to be any kind of APS score. And that's because they're not uh, accepting you just on your academics. They're also probably going to interview you. Some universities interview you. Some universities want you to write an essay or an entrance letter, a motivational letter as to why you want to go there. And they also will look at some kind of community service that you've done, something that makes you like stand out above the rest. And so keep that in mind when creating your application for your respective degrees, because they're not all the same, even across universities, they can be different. Now, as always, everybody, I hope you've enjoyed this video and you found it really useful in your journey to university. I'm going to be doing so many more videos in this collection explaining applications, uh, your NBTs, bursaries, all the hidden costs as well in university, things people don't talk about. And I'm going to make sure that you are prepared when it comes down to applying, especially in the beginning of grade 12. Now, I hope you've all enjoyed this video and give it a thumbs up and I will see you all again soon. Bye.